Hi, it's Dave here. Hope you're good. And I hope you've not been out panic buying fuel. <laughs> I'm going to talk about that in a bit. But I'm sure none of you have. you far too sensible for that. Right, I'm going to tell you three stories from yesterday uh, that encompass, you know, hope and despair, sanity and insanity, hubris and humility. I'm going to try and stitch together where I think we are at as a society, as a people. And the standout message, I want to say right at the start now, we haven't, we're not seeing the tide turning at the moment. The tide has turned comprehensively. The tide has turned. And I'm not just saying this based on what happened yesterday and my interactions with the public. This is based on, on interactions for a long period of time now. If you've been following me, you'll know that as early as January of this year, so what, eight, nine months ago, I noticed the tide was just starting to turn. It has now fully turned. We are now at the point where awareness is, is very good. Could be better still, but it's very good, certainly compared to where we are. And now the, <clears throat> the, the conversation needs to turn towards action, which is getting out there, rebuilding the communities, living free, and voicing our concerns, being authentic, and tapping into our intuition, and just sticking two fingers up to the bureaucrats, scientists, politicians, saying, fuck off, we're not doing what you tell us to do anymore. That's the next bit now. So, yesterday, I met up with eight or seven, seven or eight of my fellow freedom-loving local group. We're drawn from a, a fairly wide, wide area, Lydia at McGull, Ormskirk, Bersco, Crosby, Southport, Skelmersdale. So that's kind of my local area. It encompasses a large kind of like rural area in the middle of that with these towns kind of scattered around. So it's always really easy for us to, to meet up and we do. We've been, we go to the pub, so we went to the pub on Tuesday. I think I did a video about that. We go for walks, we go for coffee. We go and look at nature and we go and distribute the light paper every week. We tend to do that. We go to the stand in the park. So yesterday we went to a place called Bersco. As I say, there's about eight of us. Weather was like this, unusually warm and humid with a little bit of rain in the air. I love talking about the weather. And we went to Tesco's and we stood outside with our papers. Well, actually for half of the group went down the high street to give the papers out to local businesses. I said, let's stand outside Tesco, form a little group and see if we can generate some interest. And boy, did we generate some interest. Oh, we generated some interest, all right. Now, 90% of people, I'm not exaggerating at all here, 990% of people were at least receptive. And I think 30, 40% of people completely, completely on board. Totally on board, they know they've been lied to, which was great to see. We heard some horrifying stories of people's experiences in the last couple of years, but we were able, and this is why I absolutely think it is so crucial to get out there and talk to people, because we were able to provide a support and a platform now for two more people, and I think a third person's joining, to join our group to chat on our WhatsApp group and our Telegram group, but even more importantly, to come out with us and feed off the energy and bring their skills and their personality and their character. And they were just, you know, overwhelmed, overcome with it all because it was a sense of relief. And for us, it was a sense of, we've done something. It feels like you're doing, it, it, it just feels like you're doing God's work, to be honest with you, because we, we are each time. Each time we get out there and we, not recruit, but we, we help somebody else to save themselves from this disgusting tyranny. We have done something amazing. So as I say, we heard some stories. We talked to so many different people. There was any, yeah, there was a few who just disregarded, you know, the maskies. Uh, some of them appear now to have even lost the power of speech. It's like they can't get words out. Uh, one or two, I was called a anti-vaxxer. Uh, I always love that one, anti-vaxxer. Oh, you don't like hip, you don't like hip hop. You're anti-music. You don't like cricket. You're anti-sport. Oh, no, no, no. Chosen not to have this particular one, this particular job. I'm not anti-vax. I don't know enough about it, but I know enough about this one to have concerns. Somebody else called me a conspiracy theorist. Wow. 
Uh, and so I said, oh, do you know where that term, when and why that term was invented? Conspiracy theorist. Well, of course, did they respond? Of course they didn't. And it's the power of words and phrases, these terms like anti-vax and conspiracy theorists, and I'll come to another one in, in a minute. Uh, the, the, the amazing, unbelievable power that the governments and media have in, in being able to implant these phrases into people's minds that they then say that they think then justifies their position and explains this awful mess that the world is in. Incredible. However, let's not dwell on the negative. Overall, it was an incredible experience. Now, last time we were in, Bersco, one of the local business owners. She, uh, we got chatting to her. She was fully on board, and we said, next time we're in Bersco, we're going to come to your place for our coffee or beer afterwards. So we did that. She was there. We sat outside in this gorgeous, unseasonably warm weather, and we chatted and we we chatted to the lady who owned the bar, and she was lovely. We all talked, went down many rabbit holes. I think I'm still trying to find my way out, actually, of the, the, the different rabbit holes went down. But just the energy, the, 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 just the, the humility, the, the intelligence, the spirituality. You know, the, the fact that you're with people who've got an like, intellectual and, mor and moral compass. It's just, and, who, and crucially, I haven't gone absolutely basket case insane, is amazing. But here's the thing. We have lived in an insane world for a long time. People are rediscovering their sanity. They are. They're be and for anyone, I don't care what when they wake up. I don't care. I don't care if they've had the job. That's their choice. All I care about is that they join the right side. You know, and they're on the side of freedom. You know, basic human dignity, decency, defending the rights for the next generation. And people are joining us. And I'll say it again for anyone, I keep saying this and I'm saying it yesterday, I'm probably boring people with it, but let's get get out from behind the computer screen and behind the blood, stop looking at our phones and typing shit all the time, sending the links. Let's get out there and you will see, you will see that the public is now on board, the tide has turned. Right, positive and I feel great. So now we have that awareness, we move on to the, we need more people to do what we're doing. You know, you know, to create, to get out there, to refuse to follow any rules that will be implemented, to talk to people, to support people, to form communities, to live free, to stop being so fucking enslaved and scared all the time. Now, fear, I'll come to the next point. I went straight from Bersco, I had to go to the local pharmacy to collect a prescription for my dad. And isn't it weird how the, it's the environments that are allegedly promoting health that are full on dystopia, new world order still, while most other places have gone back relatively to normal. Some places are totally back to normal. For example, my local pub, which is brilliant, love going there, just totally normal. But yeah, so the local pharmacy, propaganda all over the windows, all over. It's unbelievable, absolutely unbelievable. It's worse now than ever. Only two people in, you must wear a mask. Everyone in there, going in, wearing the masks, queuing up outside, like lemmings. Well, I was one of them, bloody having to queue. Anyway, so I got in, I said to the lady, why, why, you know, why have you still got your social distancing policy? That's not, you know, not necessarily needed to be, do, to be done anymore. A lot of places aren't doing it. And she said, oh, I know, we need to get back to normal soon, don't we? And I was like, yeah, yeah, a lot of people are. And I think she was on board with us. And I said, everyone's wearing masks as well in here. And they're not everywhere else. Whereupon I was set upon. I shouldn't say set upon. I wasn't set upon. But a lady, you know the type? Again, it tends to be the older generation. And it always seems to be the, the older, the kind of like women as well. I don't know what it is that you should be wearing a mask. I went, all right, should I? I'm wearing a mask. I'm not wearing it for me. I'm wearing it to protect you. There's that other phrase. This I'm not wearing this for you. I'm wearing it to protect you. I mean, it's so utter, so much utter bullshit in that statement. It's unbelievable. I said, ah, right, okay, you're doing it for the common good then, are you? She went, that's right, I'm doing it for the common good. And walked out all proud. Obviously, you know, the, the phrase the common good, that was completely lost on her, the irony, you know. Anybody with the merest understanding of history only needs to, to have a little look to see what the common good, what that results in. So yeah, chemist still full on dystopian, um, dystopian world. 
you know, the, the chemist assistant was nice. She was, I think she was agreeing with me. She went, everyone's got their own opinion, haven't they? And I said, well, well, actually they don't, do they? You know, some people, a lot of people's opinions aren't their own. But she was nice. Um, so there was that. Now on the way to Bursco, I'd uh, drove past a petrol station. <laughs> drove past a petrol, and there they all were. There they all were. You know, the same ones, I'm sure, who went out, panic bought the bog roll at the start of all this shit show. Shit show, bog roll. I'm sure it's the same people. Monkey see, monkey do. That's what it is, isn't it? See a headline. See that other people are going to buy what it is that is allegedly being run out of. You've got to go as well, haven't you? I mean, how many people are there who've got two thirds of a tank of fuel, who only go out for five minutes on a Sunday, who are driving to fucking petrol stations to fill up, you stupid wankers? Right, let's get that out of the way then. So, I'll try and be a bit more erudite again, if I can. So, isn't it an amazing phenomenon though? Now this is, is quite telling as well, because we do have a subsection, and it is a subsection of society who are completely ignorant enslaved by fear and selfish as i say i'm sure they're the same people who panic who went to panic by the toilet roll i mean that was just unbelievable wasn't it don't get me started on that one i would hesitate i would i would uh wouldn't hesitate to say as well probably the same ones who were still muzzled because there's a particular type of person who's very who is so beholden to fear and beholden to what the media says and lacking in perspective, lacking in resilience, lacking in resolve. And that makes you selfish. And there's a particular type of person. And I think a lot of people descended into that for quite a long time. And as I say, a lot, it's amazing now to see so many people removing themselves from that grip, that media grip on their psyches. So I was, I saw that yesterday and I thought to myself, well, I'm not going to go panic buying fuel now and I don't need it yet even though my job involves driving I thought I'll wait till later if there's you know if there's no queues then we've got a petrol station now the tank was starting to run out as I say I could drive for my job so as I was driving around last night delivering I was noticing one of the petrol stations there was no one there and one of them there was everyone there so I thought well you know how stupid people can be? I'll just go and check that one, but that's empty just in case. You know, there is fuel there, but of course there wasn't, so which, is, which is why everyone went to the other one. So in the end, I went after work and joined the queue to go and get my petrol. You know, because as I say, I need it for my job. And uh, yeah, 10 o'clock at night, gridlock at the petrol station. You know, the poor, uh, the poor staff at the petrol station as well, what a day they had. So I got my 20 quid's worth of E10 fuel. And I reflected, as I had a couple of beers last night when I got back, I reflected on my day and I reflected on where I think we're at. And it's clear to me there are two societies forming. There are. And it's easy to become very, very resentful of the ones who are holding us back. As I say, the selfish ones, the ignorant ones, the ones who can't hold a conversation. The ones whose story is a media story. The ones who've got, who are pathetic, let's be honest. Come on, they are, aren't they? Now, it's easy to become resentful about that. But we can either focus on that aspect of things or we can focus on what quite clearly now are tangible and clear positives, which is, as I remarked at the start, the sheer number of people now who are waking up to this. The tide has turned. So we no longer now need to focus our energy, as I possibly just did a little bit then, on and getting angry about those who are still participating and enabling this dystopian world. Because there's enough of us now to enable us to move towards freedom. If we do the right thing, and once people have that social proof and you don't get that online 
So if you're somebody who's just posted on Facebook all day, I'm afraid, in my opinion, you're not really doing anything. It's about getting out there, talking to people, showing a presence, having conversations, being willing to be shouted at and ridiculed. Who cares? Who cares? You know, if you wake up one person, get shouted by one person. The person who is shown at you is going to shout at you regardless. But that one person who's engaged in conversation with you, you are their lifeline. You're the person who's given them that social proof that what they're thinking is real. Then that person's going to going to go out and wake another person up. It's like a snowball effect, a domino effect. That's how you overthrow tyrannies. That's how you create a better society. When people are ennobled and emboldened to do the right thing, which is why anyone who's been do, doing this for you know 18 months now, the ones who were doing it right at the start, they were so key. People were doing it before me. They were so key, those early trailblazers. And at first progress is is is, is very very slow and then it goes oof. There will be some people who'll be lulled back in by the propaganda. But even if there are, there's far more who'll be woken up by it. And most people won't be lulled back in by it. They won't be real back in by it. So there we go. Now tell me what you think of my insights. Do you agree with me that you that we do have these parallel societies setting up? Do you agree with me that the public is waking up exceptionally fast? And I do use the word exceptionally. Worth bearing in mind, actually, just gonna say that. We were in Bersco. A lot of people in the local area called Bersco Sleepy Town in you know, Zombieville. One of those towns, it kind of like rural area, kind of like possibly stuck stuck in its way, stuck in the past. I like it. I do. Uh, mainly an older generation. Now, if you're having interactions at a place like that and coming out with the perception that, wow, people have woken up in a place like that, what does that say for all of the other places? So, I have much positivity. I have concerns still. And the danger, maximum danger point, is still rapidly approaching. But, we, you know, we know that we've got to go, we've got to walk through that. We have to face that down, whatever it entails. I think this fuel crisis is all part of it as well. I'm not really going to get into my opinions about what, what all that is. It's not really my uh, my niche area, that. But <clears throat> just watching people, watching society, seeing the good and the bad, seeing people recapture their sanity and recapture their morality, re recapture their ability to think as they disentangle their minds from their poisonous grip of ideology and propaganda. It's fascinating and liberating and, and, and just wonderful to watch. So that's my message today. Don't forget to subscribe. Please leave a comment and let me know what you think and I will enjoy the rest of this walk and I'll see you soon. Bye.